Well, Sports News Now and England's footballers have been celebrating their triumph at the Women's European Championship. An event was held at London's Trafalgar Square, where the team soaked up plenty of appreciation from the fans. England beat Germany 2-1 in the final after extra time. It's England's first major football honour since 1966. More than 87,000 fans packed uh, Wembley Stadium for the final, a record for a European Championship final. So I'm actually a teacher, so for me it's those girls at school that see it and inspire them and it's just so important for girls and women to see that. They set a really good example, the girls, and I think they should put more money into women's uh, sports and football especially, yeah, and I think they should be paid as much as the men because it's like prima donnas, the male footballers now and they get paid too much and they don't pay enough to the women, do they? They don't pay all. Yeah, it's one of the best nights of my life. Yeah. I can say that one. Like, today. We're celebrating. crying our eyes out. We were so yeah. excited. And yeah. it's just because you know, like, so many years of heartbreak and the women did it. It was the yeah. women that brought it home. It's just a beautiful yeah. moment. Uh, I was actually there. Um, I managed to get tickets on Wednesday um, after we made it through. So, um, yeah, it was absolutely incredible. The best Wembley experience I've ever had. Um, and just so emotional. I couldn't, was crying the whole time. <laughs> just getting over really emotional. It's incredible. It's one of the best things I've ever seen. There were no histronics, there were no diving, no falling over. They played the game and it's a beautiful game when it's played like that. And hopefully an example to everybody, boys, girls, men and women across all countries as to how a, a great sport can be played. Well, that's jolly special, isn't it? Let's bring sports broadcaster Olatomiwa Toby, uh, who is in our London studio. Good to see you, uh, Toby. So England, European champions, and all the more special because they faced off against eight-time champions Germany, and it was England women's first major title. I mean, how do you rank the team's performance? They waited 56 years and it's finally come home. This side, absolutely brilliant. Serena Wigman done absolutely wonderfully well for the England side. I mean, we've always seen her quality as a coach and a couple of colleagues backstage were joking about why don't the men just adopt her to come in to coach their side. But really, she's done wonderfully well for the England side and you can see it with the results throughout the games. Considered just twice throughout the duration of the tournament. First, a very strong, tough one against Austria and, and then just never looked back really, beating Northern Ireland, beating Sweden, who are second, the second ranked side, beating Germany, fifth ranked side, beating Spain, seventh ranked side, or despite them being eight. And, and it just looked like each game, they just put it up a gear higher, a gear higher. And the, 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 the victory really is very well deserved. Serena Wigman done wonderfully well. Uh, Bet Mead, highest goal scorer, Golden Boots winner. Uh, all from the back to the front, played beautiful football, played impressive football. Absolutely being able to play out from the back, nothing like back passes back to the keeper. Exciting to watch. And you saw the fans come out in large numbers. Excess of 87,000 fans in the stadium to come see this game, which really dispels the myth that nobody watches fo women's football because we've seen it time and time and time again. Uh, it was first Barcelona Lyon in the championship. We saw 80,000, excess of 90,000. We saw it in the Champions League. We saw it in the El Clasico as well. And now we're seeing it in the women's Euros football. I said it before and I'm saying it again. The fact that the World Cup was pushed to December, November, December, is kind of a blessing in disguise. There's a silver lining for these women because it's the only footballing event going on. The whole world is here to watch it. And you can now see that women's football has come a very long way in a very short period of time. And like, like they said, they've conquered Europe. The next thing is really the world. Congratulations to them. Well, absolutely. Uh, well deserved, isn't it? Uh, and of course, as the celebrations continue, um, the significance being assessed, uh, as you've just done, um, it's been noted that unlike the men's team, there are few women of colour in this squad. I mean, why do you think that is? Well, it's for a number of reasons. Uh, holistically, there's not so much investment into women's football. Just three women of color in the England women's starting lineup, and just about 
16%, roughly like 29 women of color from the WSL, the Women's Super League, which is pretty much where all the players are gotten from. They don't really look outside of England to get players. And part of the reason there, some analysis can be in the fact that it's kind of a middle class sport, women's football, partly because there's not so much investment into the sport. And I mean, if you play Sunday look football, it's kind of referenced in the sense of you go for a game and you have to pay for the pitch that you use and pay for yourself to sort yourself out and to sort things out. And we also saw them say they try to get stadiums to host and stadiums just wouldn't host them. Stadiums would rather be paid to host them. So really it's Unless you're financially capable, unless your parents are sponsoring you or you have someone that is really footing the bill, it's very hard to get into those games. So only really the richer or the more privileged, if I may use the word, uh, have been able to get involved in the game. But it goes to show the FA that very much more needs to be done in getting more people getting involved into football. Definitely there's the fans. People love it. People watch it. Getting more women and kids from a very young age, getting girls involved in football right from schools, primary schools, secondary schools, getting them involved and then pushing the game even higher. The women have shown it can come home, it has come home and we can only keep on building from what we have currently. These, these ladies are history makers and their name have de definitely gone down in the history books in front of all of the papers across the capital today. Trafalgar Square has been buzzing, Wembley has been buzzing, I've been buzzing, every genuine football lover has been buzzing and we'll just keep cheering these women on. Well, I couldn't have said it better myself and uh, obviously this victory piles pressure on the men's team uh, when they go to Qatar. But before we go, uh, Toby, let's mark the death of one NBA's, uh, one of NBA's greatest ever players, Bill Russell, who's died at the age of 88. He won 11 NBA championships and was also a civil rights activist. Very, very briefly, your reaction to his passing. Well, 88 years old, arguably, without doubt, the greatest NBA uh, athlete of all time, center, cup player, he's won 11, consecutive, 11 trophies, nine as a player, two as a manager, eight consecutive NBA titles. He's the greatest, not just on the pitch or on the stage, but off the court as well. Human rights activist, fought for a lot of good causes, fought for the likes of Muhammad Ali, and he's just gone down in history books. His name will be remembered for a very long time. And we wish his family all the very best. Toby, thank you very much indeed. Olatomiwa Toby is a sports broadcaster. You're talking to be there from London.